today on Adventures in Faith with Jerry Savelle. Don't let anybody convince you that it's just too big for God. Nothing is too big for the God that you and I serve. If you can think it, He can do it. If you can ask it, He can do it. If you can dream it, He can do it. Hello, everyone. I'm Jerry Savelle. Welcome to Adventures in Faith. We are so thrilled that you have joined us today, and I'm praying that as we share the Word of God, your faith is going to be inspired. It's going to go to a new level. You know, the Bible says that this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. I've been preaching the message of faith around the world now. In fact, in my 53rd year at the time of this broadcast, and I have been teaching people how to uh, exercise their faith, how to stay in faith, how to believe God for impossible things because I've done it myself and God has never let me down. And he's no respecter of persons. If he hasn't let me down, then I know he wouldn't let you down either. So I want to encourage you today, just stay in faith. Stay in faith and never give up. Today, we're going to begin a brand new series. We're going to be talking about dreaming big dreams, dreaming big dreams. God wants you to dream big dreams, bigger dreams than you've ever dreamed before. Now, about this time, somebody always says, well, Brother Jerry, don't you know what's going on around us? How can I dream big dreams with all the trouble that's in the world, all the negative things that are happening? Hey, that doesn't limit God. Our God is the unlimited God. God can do anything. God can make it happen even when men say impossible. We serve a God in whom nothing is impossible. So don't ever let anybody talk you out of your faith. Don't let anybody cause you to let go of your dreams. You know, uh, I want to read to you from Proverbs chapter 29, a very familiar verse. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the wording a little bit so that it will uh, uh, go right along with what we're going to be dealing with today. So I know you're familiar with this verse. You have your Bibles. Let's open to Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he, he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Where there is no vision. Now the word I want to change up a little bit is where there is no God inspired dream. That's what a vision is. It's a God inspired dream. It comes from a word from God that has been dropped down into your heart. And the Bible says, if you don't have this word from God, then you don't have a vision. If you don't have a vision, then obviously you don't have a dream. And the, the result of that is people that don't dream, people that don't have vision, they begin to perish. You know, they, they, they just take years off of their life, so to speak. But if you have a dream, if you have a vision, a God-inspired idea, then praise God, that is something that motivates you. It keeps you moving forward. It keeps you determined and single-minded and focused. And it causes you to get up every day with a smile on your face, knowing that something good is on the horizon. And if I'll just stay in faith, then God's going to make it happen. So once again, without a God-inspired dream, then the people perish. Don't let that happen to you. Just keep dreaming big dreams. You know, uh, I remember when I was just a young boy, my dad used to say to my mom all the time, that boy is always dreaming. And I was, I was always dreaming. Now, back when I was a, a child, my dad was in the automotive business. My dad did paint and body work. My dad restored classic automobiles. My dad built race cars. I grew up on a racetrack. And everything I dreamed was centered around something to do with automobiles, something to do with fast and horsepower. And, and uh, that was always what I dreamed. I'd get up in the morning, even as a little boy, and go to the breakfast table. Some of you may remember when families used to have breakfast together. Well, we did as a, as a child. Uh, my, my sister and I never went to school uh, before we had breakfast. My dad never went to work before we had breakfast together. And, and usually at the breakfast table, that's where I'd start sharing my dreams, particularly with my dad. I'd say, Dad, I had a dream last night. And he'd look over at my mother and he'd kind of roll his eyes and say, that boy's always dreaming. And I said, Dad, I dreamed of this car we can build. I said, now here's what it looks like. Now I couldn't draw, I wasn't an artist, but I could describe what I saw in the dream and my dad could build it. 
And uh, later I had a cousin who became a commercial artist and he moved in with us after he got out of high school and uh, uh, he was an artist and later became a commercial artist. But he could draw it. And I'd say to him, Wade, here's what I dreamed last night. And I'd describe it to him. And Wade would sit there at the breakfast table and he would draw it. I'd say, let me see that. And I'd say, no, the grill's a little bit different than that. And I'd tell him what the grill looked like, what the headlights looked like, and uh, what the fins looked like on the, on the rear. And, uh, and he'd draw it again. I said, that's exactly what I saw. I said, show it to my dad. And dad would look at it and he'd say, I could build that. And so we had a team going. I could dream it, Wade could draw it, and dad could build it. But I was always dreaming. And even when I got older, the same dreams. And in fact, eventually I went into the automotive business owned my own paint and body shop, did uh, classic car restoration, building hot rods and race cars right along with my dad. And I was always dreaming of how to make something faster, how to make it uh, like nobody else had ever made it, one of a kind. That was always my dream. And then I went into the ministry in 1969 and I, I gave up the automotive business. I gave up the classic cars, gave up the hot rods, the race cars, and, uh, and I began to focus on the ministry that God had called me into. But I didn't stop dreaming, even though my dreams had now changed. I wasn't dreaming about fast cars anymore. I was dreaming about how I can take the message of faith beyond my city, beyond my state, beyond my nation, and now I'm dreaming of taking the message of faith to the whole world. And praise God, those dreams have come to pass. 53 years I have been preaching the word of faith. I have been privileged to preach in 49 different nations, teaching people how to become winners in life through the word of faith. And praise God, those dreams have been fulfilled. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't have any more dreams. Oh, I'm dreaming bigger dreams now than I've ever dreamed before. Now, the Bible never said anywhere that when we become Christians, we must stop dreaming. No, that's what the Bible is all about. God's Word is designed to create an image on the inside of you. I like to say it this way, and I learned this from Brother Copeland oh, over 50 years ago. I never forget him saying this. One of the first times that I heard him preach, he said, your heart is the canvas, the Holy Spirit is the artist, and the Word of God is the oil. And if you'll spend quality time in the Word and in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit will paint an image on the canvas of your heart, and it will be the dream that God has for you. I never forgot that. And I have been practicing that principle all these years. I want to encourage you to do it as well. If you'll spend quality time in the Word of God, you see, God's Word is designed to create an image to create a vision, to create a dream. And once that vision, that image, or that dream is in your heart and you continue in the Word and continue in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, He will perfect it. And it'll become so real on the inside of you that eventually nobody can talk you out of it. I've got some big dreams deep down on the inside of me and nobody can talk me out of them. I've had people try to, I've had people say, well, now you're getting older. You know, you're 75 years old. You're not going to be riding motorcycles much more. And they try to talk me out of my chair. It's like Christian biker ministry, and I'm still riding them. And I'm telling people, when I can't ride two wheels, I'll get on three wheels. This is a dream that I've had for years and years, and we're winning souls with it. And my dream is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I don't let anybody talk me out of my dreams. And I encourage you, don't let anybody talk you out of your dreams either. Amen. Listen, we're going to continue this in just a few moments, but first I want you to watch this special announcement and then I'll be back with some continuing insight in dreaming big dreams. Why do so many people think small and limit God? What if God has something bigger and greater for you? Today's special offer, the Living Your Dream special package, contains Jerry Savelle's brand new three-part audio series and book, Never Stop Dreaming Big Dreams, along with his inspiring three-part audio series, No Boundaries. In this special package, Jerry teaches what limits people's thinking, how to expand your vision, how to overcome delays, and how to live free of limitations. Strengthen your faith to experience God-given, God-honoring dreams. Break free from small thinking and small living. Begin to see God-sized opportunities and advancements. Don't delay. 
Call or go online now to jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of the Living Your Dream special package. Don't let unseen limits hold you back any longer. Order now and begin to dream bigger, go further, and achieve more for God. Hey, welcome back. Thank you for joining me once again. As we uh, begin to go into the uh, announcement, we were talking about how that nowhere in the Bible does it say that once you become a Christian, you have to stop dreaming. No, it doesn't say that at all. In fact, God wants you to dream. He wants you to dream big dreams. Now, I want to read to you something from Ephesians chapter 3. If you have your Bible, you might want to join with me. In fact, I'm going to read it from the King James. I'm going to read it from the Amplified. I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation. And I'm also going to read it from the Message Translation. Why? Because I want you to get it, praise God. Now, talking about dreaming big dreams. Listen to this from the King James, Ephesians 3.20. Now, unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Notice, he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. In other words, God is saying, if you can ask it, then he can do it. And not only that, he can do it even bigger than what you ask. If you can think it, God is saying, I can do it. And not only can I do it, I can do it bigger than what you thought. Now listen to it from the Amplified Bible. Now to him who by action of the, his power this, that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and listen to this and do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, and dreams. Listen to that. God is able to do super abundantly. I love that term, super abundantly. Say that with me. My God is able to do super abundantly above all that I can ask, all that I can think, all that I can imagine, and even all that I can dream. Can you fathom that? If God is saying, God is actually saying to us, I dare you to think bigger. I dare you to dream bigger. I dare you to ask for bigger things. And he says, and if you can ask it, think it, imagine it, and dream it, I can do it, and I can do it even bigger than what you thought or imagined or dreamed. That's the God I serve. And he's been proving that to me for 53 years now. I am a dreamer. I dream big dreams. And not one time has God said, now, son, you're just going too far this time. No, he's encouraged me, take it further. Take it to, to its limit if there is a limit, praise God. And now I want to read it to you from the Passion Translation. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imaginations. He will outdo them all. Isn't that amazing? I've got to read that to you again. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imaginations. He will outdo them all. That's the God we serve. And nowhere in these scriptures are you seeing him say, uh, you're not allowed to dream anymore. You're not allowed to imagine big things anymore. Now, you're a Christian, just be satisfied with what's happening to you right now and, 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 and don't dream any bigger dreams. No, that's not what he's saying at all. He's saying, come on up higher. Come on up further. Let's do things that we've never done before. If you can dream it, I can help you make it come to pass. That's what God is saying to you. So don't let anybody tell you that God is not interested in your dreams. Yeah, I, I always, uh, instead of it being just my dream, I, I like to make sure it's God's dream for me. And the way that I do that is spend quality time with him. You know, if, I'm, if I have a question about it, I'll just lay it out before him and I'll say, Lord, this is something that I've been dreaming about. Is this from you? Is this something that you want me to do? Is this something that you're inspiring me because it keeps coming up in my heart? Uh, apparently, because it keeps coming up in my heart, I believe it's from you. And now I receive it. I lay hold upon it. Now you show me where to begin. Show me how to start. Show me how I can, I can take the first step in causing it to come to pass. And then say this to the Lord. And Father, I want you to know 
that once I begin, there is no turning back. I will not give up no matter what anybody says, no matter what happens to anybody else. If it's God's dream for me, then I am not going to give up on it until it comes to pass. Now, listen to the message translation. God can do anything, you know, far more than you could ever imagine in your wildest dreams. See, that's what I'm holding on to. You know, a lot of people since March of 2020, back when the uh, coronavirus pandemic hit the world, a lot of people, including a lot of Christians that I know, quit dreaming. And they started saying these kind of things. You know, uh, I've listened to them. And they started saying, well, I used to have big dreams before the COVID hit. But now, you know, I'm not sure that God could make that happen because of all the things that are happening around us. Hey, God's still God. He hasn't changed in the least. The Bible says, I'm God and I change not. So if God could do it before COVID, God can do it now. Don't let anybody convince you that it's just too big for God. Nothing is too big for the God that you and I serve. If you can think it, he can do it. If you can ask it, he can do it. If you can dream it, he can do it. So just keep dreaming and don't let anybody talk you out of it. Now, uh, you know, I've said many times, you know, people saying, well, Brother Jerry, why are you still dreaming? Well, the Bible tells me to. Uh, I'm 75 years old. And the Bible says in Joel chapter 2, verse 28, your old men shall dream dreams. Well, I don't really consider myself an old man, but I am an older man. And the Bible tells me that old men should dream dreams. So I'm not going to stop dreaming dreams. I'm not going to stop dreaming big dreams. Now, this doesn't mean if you're younger, you can't dream. You can dream too. But I'm just saying when you get older, nowhere in the Bible does it say, now you have to stop dreaming. I am not going to stop dreaming big dreams. In fact, I'm trusting God that every time a dream comes to pass, he's going to take me to another level. Amen. Now, listen to what Ephesians 3.20 from the message translation says once again. God can do anything you know. Say that with me. My God can do anything. Say it again. My God can do anything. God can do anything you know far more than you could ever imagine in your wildest dreams. Now listen to what Job says in Job chapter 42 and the Amplified Version, verse 2. I know, speaking about God, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be restrained. Listen to that. I know. See, God had, has been proving to Job, even though Satan came against Job, stole nearly everything he had, caused all kind of havoc in his life. But if you keep reading the book of Job, God restored everything twice fold. God made him wealthier than he'd ever been before. God blessed him twice fold with everything he'd had before. And God, Job is saying, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be restrained. If God has given you a dream, if God has given you an assignment, if God has given you a vision, then hold on to this promise. No one can cause it to, to be restrained. No one can keep it from coming to pass. The only person that can keep that from coming to pass is you. And if you don't do it, then no one else can, including the devil. He can't cause it to be restrained if you will not let go of it. So just hold on to your dream. No matter what's going on around you, just dare to believe that God can do anything. Say it again with me. My God can do anything. Do you believe that today? Do you truly believe that? Amen. Well, if you do, then you ought to have a smile on your face right now. You ought to have your hands raised praising God, and you might even have a dance in your step because your God can do anything. Now, the message translation for Job 42.2 says this, I'm convinced you can do anything and everything. You can do anything and everything. Are you convinced of that? Is that what you're saying today? Are you siding in with the rest of the world and so many Christians that have lost their dreams, have given up, have lost their hope? No, don't side in with them. You side in with the Bible and you say what the Bible says. I'm convinced that you can do anything and everything. Amen. 
and God will prove it to you. Now, I want to take you to Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. And this is the story of God making promises to Abraham. And uh, uh, actually, when that promise came to Abraham, uh, God wanted it to become a vision for him, a dream for him. And here's what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12 from the message translation. It says, keep it, uh, keep at it rather. This, let, me, let me explain this first. It's what Abraham did and what the writer of the book of Hebrews is talking about. This is what Abraham did. And now the writer is encouraging us to do the same. He says, keep at it until the finish. Be like those who stay the course with committed faith and get everything promised to them. That's what Abraham did. Even in the natural, when it looked impossible, he refused to give up. He kept at it. He stuck at it. He stuck with it. And the result was he had committed faith and God gave him everything that had been promised to him. In other words, the dream that God put in his heart came to pass. The vision that God put in his heart came to pass. Why? Because he would not give up. With committed faith, he just kept at it. He, he kept at it to the finish. And then he got everything that was promised to him. Now, if you want everything that God has promised to you, then you're going to have to follow that example. In fact, the Bible tells us that Abraham's the father of faith. And in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it says that we are to follow in the same footsteps as our father Abraham. So what did Abraham do? He kept at it. Even when it looked like it would never come to pass, he kept at it. Even when people around him are saying you're a fool, he kept at it. And the Bible says, if you will follow those who through faith and patience, then you too will have a promised completion. You'll get everything that God promised to you. Now, in Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 3, and I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible, it says, for the dream comes through much effort. The dream comes through much effort. That simply means it doesn't just come to pass automatically. Every dream I've ever dreamed, I've had to stand in faith for. I've had to continue and, and, and just make up my mind that I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to accept defeat. I'm just going to stick with it. And as I, as, I made, uh, as I backed what I had said I was going to do, then God eventually brought it to pass. But every dream I've had to fight for, I have to stand in faith for. And I'm going to tell you something. It's worth it. Praise God. You know, I, I, I can't help but think that uh, as I'm getting ready to close this broadcast out, and I had a dream that lasted 20 years. 20 years I dreamed this dream. God told me that one day I would have an international aircraft that I could fly anywhere in the world that I would no longer have to depend on commercial airlines to get me to the nations that God wanted me to preach in. And I started believing for that international aircraft 20 years ago. Now it's 22 years ago. 20 years ago. Now, in the natural, it looked like it would never come to pass. We're talking 20 years. Now, God had blessed me with airplanes, you know, during that 20 years, but they didn't have the range to take me overseas. I could fly anywhere in America. I could fly to Canada. I could fly to Mexico, but I, I couldn't fly anywhere else around the world. And I kept holding fast to that dream. And then during the pandemic, 2020, I, listen to this. When most people are saying worst of times, there's no, lo no need you to continue that dream. You might as well give up on that dream because we're in our worst of times. The, the, the pandemic's here. You might as well quit believing. You might as well just give up. No, I wouldn't give up. I wouldn't quit dreaming. And wouldn't you know, in the midst of what others are saying, worst of times, we were having our best of times. And guess what happened? That international airplane manifested in September of 2020, praise God, during a pandemic, absolutely paid for, can fly it anywhere in the world. When, when, the, when the world opens up again, then praise God, we have no limitations. Why? Because God put that dream in my heart 20 years ago and I refused to let go of it. I almost did a couple of times, but God scolded me for it. He said, 
Don't give up on that dream. I put that dream in your heart. Don't you give up on it. I said, yes, sir. And I, I got hold of my faith once again and, and made up my mind. I am not going to be moved. None of these things move me. And praise God, it came to pass. And if God would do that for me, now you may not need an international airplane, but you're believing for something in your life right now that looks impossible. Have you dreamed it? Are you convinced God gave you that dream? then why would you let go of it? Don't let go of the dream. Do what Abraham did. He kept at it till the finish. He kept, uh, with, he kept going after it with committed faith. And then the Bible says, and God blessed him with everything that he had promised him. And God's going to do the same for you. So my message to you today is, don't let go of your dream. Keep dreaming big dreams. Amen. Praise God. I want you to watch this announcement. I'll be back in just a few moments. Why do so many people think small and limit God? What if God has something bigger and greater for you? Today's special offer, the Living Your Dream special package, contains Jerry Savelle's brand new three-part audio series and book, Never Stop Dreaming Big Dreams, along with his inspiring three-part audio series, No Boundaries. In this special package, Jerry teaches what limits people's thinking, how to expand your vision, how to overcome delays, and how to live free of limitations. Strengthen your faith to experience God-given, God-honoring dreams. Break free from small thinking and small living. Begin to see God-sized opportunities and advancements. Don't delay. Call or go online now to jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of the Living Your Dream special package. Don't let unseen limits hold you back any longer. Order now and begin to dream bigger, go further, and achieve more for God. What a joy it's been sharing the Word of God with you today, and I trust you've been inspired. And let me just encourage you one more time. Don't ever stop dreaming big dreams. Amen? Now, you saw the announcement, and I want to remind you of it because I know that these materials, these resources, will really bless your life. This little book, Never Stop Dreaming Big Dream. You can read this on your lunch hour. You can read it uh, before you go to bed tonight. You can read it before you go to work in the morning. It's just a small book, but it is jam-packed full of revelation knowledge and teachings on how that you can hold fast to these dreams that God has given you and never let go. And then right along with it, three CDs, Never Stop Dreaming Big Dreams. And then also in this special package, three CDs entitled No Boundaries. God is the no boundaries God, the no limits God. All these resources are available to you. Write to our office, go on our website, jerrysavelle.org to find out the cost, all the information, and we'll get them to you just as quickly as we possibly can. And remember, your faith will overcome the world. And I'll see you again next week.